أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبهين استعين وهو خير موفق ومعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين Tonight we hear mainly inshallah ta'ala to remember Imam Sajjad according to one narration tonight is the night of the martyrdom of the Shahada of Imam Sajjad. Imam Sajjad alayhi salatu was salam was born in the year 38 after Hijrah. So he lived with his grandfather Imam Ali for two years before Imam Ali was martyred. His mother, his mother is Shahibanu or Shah Zanan bint Yazjir. We have two Imams whose mothers are daughters of kings. One is Imam Mahdi, Ajanallah Ta'ala Qalajim Shadid whose mother was the daughter of the king of Rome. And the other one is Imam Sajjad, whose mother was the daughter of the king of Persia, of Iran. And it's interesting to read their accounts, as both converted to Islam before meeting the Imam, through Sayyidah Fatima in their dreams. That's, I think, a very interesting account. So Imam Sajjad was born in the year 38. He became a mom in the year 61. When Imam Hussein was martyred. And he was Imam until the year 95, in which he was martyred himself. At the age of 57 or 58, so he was Imam, we could say, for almost 34 years. It's a pretty long time. When we examine the duration for which Imam Sajjad was the Imam, we notice two we could say distinct periods of the Imam of the Imam Sajjad. One period was this very short period for maybe a couple of months or a few months. Immediately after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, until when they settled back in Medina. This is one period, and the other period is the longer period, which was from the time they settled in Medina until the year 95. There are two distinct approaches that Imam Sajjad takes in these two periods. And the first period, after, immediately after the martyrdom of Imam Sajjad, when we read the Maqatil in the books of history, we see that Imam Sajjad is extremely, along with his aunt, Sayyidah Zainab, he's extremely outspoken and aggressive and assertive. He goes to the court of Mal'un 
Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. And Ubaidullah tries to insult him and insult his father. And he answers. He doesn't do tabiyah. He doesn't remain quiet. He answers. He answers Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad gets angry and threatens him with death. And Imam Sajjad says, Abil Mawte Tuhaddiduni. There are numerous accounts where we see Imam Sajjad is very distinctly outspoken during this period. He goes to Sham, they're taken to Sham. There are different encounters he has with different peoples, with different people, in which this spirit of this spirit of assertiveness is uh, on display. But on one occasion, Yazid takes him to the masjid, and then he tells and then he tells someone to go, a khatib to go, and bash Imam Hussein and Imam Ali, and so on and so forth. Imam Sajjad doesn't remain quiet. He gets up, and in the presence of Yazid, tells the Khatib that he's doing wrong in a very strong language. And there are even narrations that say that Imam Sajjad himself went to Manbah and started saying speech, which is also uh, very popular. And the reason for this, the reason that he was so outspoken in this period was because Imam Hussein was martyred in the brutal way that he was martyred. In this message, back then they didn't have the media we have today. The message had to get out. He didn't want to let it die in the bud, in the final stages. It was the mission of Sayyidah Zainab and Imam Sajjad, Imam Zainab al-Abadeen, to get this message out. So on every occasion, occasion, they try to very bluntly speak their minds and hearts about Imam Hussein. There was no taqiyya during this period. But as Imam, as Imam Sajjad moves back into Medina, we see his method change. His method very noticeably changes. Taqiyya becomes a prominent element in his behavior and in, in, in his interaction with the society and with the Bani Umayya. He becomes very cautious in his dealings with people. He remains aloof of all the supposedly Shia movements that took place after the martyr of Imam Hussein. I say supposedly because although some of them were sincere and genuine, most of those who, most of the people who participated in those rebellions were not true Shias. Their, their heads might have been true Shias. So Imam Sajjad remained aloof he didn't get himself involved in the Qiyam al-Tawabi. He didn't get, get himself involved in the Qiyam of Mukhtar. He didn't get himself involved in the rebellion of Harra, which took place in Medina itself. He remained absolutely aloof. Although there are some Shia historians, some Shia scholars who propose the theory that Imam Sajjad was uh, stealthily and subtly and in, in a clandestine way in touch with, say, Mukhtar or the Tawabin. But that's a, if that's a theory, whether it's true or not, the fact is that Imam Sajjad tried to keep, uh, kept his distance from 
these um, so-called Shia movements. And he even went so far that during the during the Rakhato Harra, during the Rakhato Harra, when Marwan feared for his family's well-being, Marwan, the enemy of Imam Hussein and Imam Ali before him. When Marwan feared for the life of his family, he first tried to take his family to, to Abdullah ibn Umar. He asked Abdullah ibn Umar whether he could take care of his family and shelter his family during the chaos that had taken over Medina uh, after the rebellion of Abdullah ibn Hanzalah that led to the uh, retaliation of Yazid. Abdullah ibn Umar did not accept. Marwan took his family to Imam Sajjad. Imam Sajjad embraced his family and took his family in. And sheltered his family. This is the type of approach that Imam Sajjad has. And it's for good reason. It was for good reason. The entire Shia community had fallen apart. There were really not, not that many true Shias. The reason that the rebellion of, of Mukhtar didn't last long was because even those who were called Shia in Kufa, they were not really true Shias. They were Muhabba Ahl al Bayt. But not only very few of them considered Imam Ali to be Muftar al Ta'ah to be the Imam that must be obeyed. So there wasn't that many true Shias with the demise, with the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, and with, especially with the Qiyam al-Tawabin and the Qiyam al-Mukhtar and their, the backlash of Yazid, the Shia community was decimated. And that is why we have Rawayat, numerous Rawayat, I might have referred to these in a while in previous speeches. That after Imam Hussein, only three people remained Shia. Just as the riwayat that we have concerning the time after uh, the, the demise, the, the death of Prophet Muhammad, that say that there was only three individuals who remained Muslim. Salman and Maqtal and Abu Dhar. In the same way, we have a number of rawayat that say that after the Muharrim of Imam Hussein, only three individuals remain true Shias. عن أبي عبد الله عليه السلام ارتد الناس بعد الحسين إلا ثلاثة أبو خالد الكابلي Abu Khalid al Kabuli, Yahya ibn Umm al Tawil, Wajubayr ibn Mut'im. Thumma inna al Nas lahiku wa kathuru. Only three individuals remained true Shias. And thereafter, through the efforts of Imam Sajjad, the Shia community slowly grew and increased. So because of this, Imam Sajjad realized that if he were to engage in any open <coughs> movements, the very few Shias left would be gone and he would be killed. And that, was, that would be the end of the story. So what he was supposed to do at that period of, in time was to keep things calm to observe utmost taqiyya and to try to try to educate people 
about the true Shia faith. He had to educate people about the true Shia faith. Please recite the salawat. If the Shia were to persist as a faith, there had to be other people, there had to be more Shias trained regarding the, the essence of the Shia faith, regarding the ideology of the Shia faith, regarding the Shia doctrine. And that's what Imam Sajjad took upon himself to do. And because of the environment that he lived in, because of the close surveillance that he was subjected to, that he was exposed to, he chose to do this with the aid of Adariya and supplications. And that is how we have a Sahifa Asajjah. Because supplications are uh, means that don't really, from a political perspective, they don't really seem to be sensitive or provocative. So he tried to educate people concerning the Shia faith through the medium of supplications. And it's for this reason that when you read the, the Ad'iyya, the supplications of As-Sahifa as sajjadiyah you see that they are totally distinct from most of the other Ad'iyya that we have in the Ahlul Bayt. The composition and the style is noticeably different from the other Ad'iyya that we have from the Ahlul Bayt. Read the Ad'iyya of Mufatih al-Janan and the Ad'iyya of As-Sahifa as sajjadiyah The style, the language, the composition the material is different. It's because the supplications of As-Sahifa as sajjadi are not just merely supplications. They're meant to be a, a complete educational package that convey Shia ideology, Shia philosophy, Shia cosmology, Shia anthropology, Shia spirituality, and Shia al -fan. It's a complete encyclopedia of the Shia faith in the form of Adi'iyya. And it's for this reason that the spiritual masters, the ulama of Irfan and Akhlaq, they so strongly encourage and exhort us to refer to as Sahih al sajjad to read the supplications of Sahih al sajjad not just as a dua, but to pay attention to the contents of a sahifa and And to try to train, try to educate out ourselves based on these supplications. <clears throat> now, there are some individuals and some scholars who doubt the authenticity of as sahifa as and its attribution to Imam Sajjad. Because from a very strictly Rajali perspective, when you look at it, there are some missing links. There are some loopholes in the chain of transmission in the Salsalat al-Sanad of as sahifa as And so, unfortunately, historically, in the Shia community, there has been a neglect. The, the Shia community has been neglectful toward as sahifa as because of this, because some scholars um, <clears throat> uh, didn't con consider it authentic or credible. To address this issue, I would like to refer you 
to the answer that Allama Muhammad Taqi Majlisi gives to this question the credibility of a Sahih Fasad I don't know if you've heard of his name, Allama Muhammad Taqi Majlisi. He is the father of Allama Majlisi, the famous Allama Majlisi, Allama Muhammad Baqir Majlisi. The compiler of Biharul Anwar. The author, the Mu'allif of Biharul Anwar is Allama Muhammad Baqir Majlisi. His father is Allama Muhammad Taqi Majlisi. He was, he's a very well respected, very spiritual scholar who passed away in the year 1070 after Hijrah. He's much respected by the spiritual scholars. He was an extremely great spiritual master of his time. <clears throat> in his Rawdatul Muttaqeen, in his Rawdatul Muttaqeen, when he, well, due to a certain certain reason, he ta he starts talking about as Saif as Sajadi. And then he raises this question that some people have doubted the authenticity of a Sahih as sajjadiyya He says, first, when we read the contents of a Sahih as sajjadiyya we are left with no doubt whatsoever that the contents are from divine origin. They must be from Masum. They must be from Imam Sajjad. They must be from Rasul. That's one answer. The second answer, which I would like to have that tonight. The second reason that he gives for his, for considering as Sahifa as Sajjadiyya to be a credible book of supplications that must be referred to by the Shia, and that must that the Shia must benefit from this book. The second reason I'm going to read for you. It's very interesting. It will show to you and to me, inshallah, the great status of a Saif and Sajjadiyya in the amount that we lose by not referring to a Saif and Sajjadiyya on a daily basis and benefiting from this vast ocean of Shia knowledge and spirituality. So after uh, Allama Muhammad Taqi Majlisi, after he, cons after he considers the question, he says, first, the contents speaks for itself. Second, this is the Arabic, the exact phrase of Allama Muhammad Taqi Majlisi. وَأَمَّا مَنْ كَشَفَ لِهَادَ الضَّعِيفِ but in addition to the previous answer that I give, that I gave, and it is this answer, it is this reason that is my main reason for endorsing a Sahifa Sajjadiyya and for considering it authentic. And I've said this on numerous occasions, and people know this. I've said this before. And then he goes on to tell a story. Please pay attention to this story. أَنِّي كُنْتُ فِي أَوَائِلِ الْبُلُوغُ طَالِبًا لِمَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ صَاعِيًا فِي طَلَبِ رَضَاهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لِي قَرَارٌ إِلَّا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ When I was 13, 14 years of age, God had blessed me with a strong spiritual inclination. And I was always speaking, I was always seeking a path to spiritual perfection. I was restless. I was looking for something. The only thing that would calm me down relatively was the Allah. Ila, this was my state and 
Anna sahib az zaman salavatullah alayhi. Please recite salavatullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إلا أن رأيت بين النوم واليقظة أن صاحب الزمان صلوات الله عليه كان واقفا في الجامع القديم في إصبهان علامة محمد تقي ما تستي lives in Isfahan. He says this was my state, this restless state, my thirst for the spiritual, for spiritual perfection. This was my state until one day. As it was approaching the morning, he doesn't say this here. He was doing his salatul layl and his getting ready for his salat, his morning prayer. In between the state of sleep and yaqda, awaking, he saw Imam Mahdi. And as as uh, the spiritual masters say, as the ulama al-Fan say, when people first see Imam Mahdi, it's usually they see his mithali existence. They usually see his mithali existence. That's why Allah Muhammad Taqim al here says, رَأَيْتُ بَيْنَ النَّوْمِ وَالْيَقْضَى So he sees Imam Mahdi standing by the masjid, the big masjid of Isfahan, قَرِيبًا مِنْ بَابِ الْقَنْبِي الَّذِ الْآنْ مَدْرِسِي He saw Imam Mahdi standing in one location of the big masjid of Isfahan where this place later became his class. فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ أُقَبِّلَ غِجِلَهِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ I said salam to him and then I went to kiss his feet. فَلَمْ يَدَعْنِي He didn't stop me. وَأَخَذَنِي And then he held me. فَقَبَّلْتُ يَدَهْ I kissed his hand. وَسَأَلْتُ عَنْهُ مَسَائِلَ قَدْ أَشْكَلْتُ قَدْ أُشْكَلَتْ عَلَيْهِ And then I asked him concerning certain questions that had plagued me and bothered me for some time. He answered all those questions. After asking his questions, he says, ثُمَّ قُلْتُ يَا مَوْلَاي لَا يَتَيَسَّرُ لِي أَنْ أَصِلَ إِلَى خِدْمَتِكِ كُلَّ وَحْتٍ فَأَعْطِنِي كِتَابًا أَعْمَلُ عَلَيْهِ الدَّائِمًا Oh, Imam Mahdi, it's not possible for me to see you all the time. So please give me a spiritual guidebook. <coughs> Please give me a spiritual guidebook whereby I could embark on the spiritual path and attain spiritual perfection. فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ أَعْطَيْتُ لِأَجْلِكَ كِتَابًا إِلَى مَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدْ أَتَّاجِ Imam Mahdi tells him, I've given a book for your sake to this person who is, whose name is Muhammad Taj. Now, Allah Muhammad Taqim al doesn't really doesn't know Muhammad Taj in his life, in his waking life. But in this vision that he has, Although I didn't really know him, but in that vision that I had, in that dream that I had, in that mythali experience that I had, I knew him. فَقَالَ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ رُوحْ وَخُذْ مِنْهِ Imam Mahdi said, go to Muhammad Taj and get this book that is for you from him. فَخَرَجْتُ مِنْ بَابِ الْمَسْجِدِ الَّذِي كَانَ مُقَابِلٍ لِوَجِهِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ إِلَى جَانِبِ دَارِ الْبِطِّيخِ وَوَصَلْتُ إِلَى دَارِكَ الشَّاخْصِ After Imam Mahdi said, go, I followed Imam Mahdi's direction and I went in that direction that he had pointed until I reached this man, Muhammad Taj. Please say a salawat.
I went in the direction that Imam Mahdi had pointed me, and I arrived at Muhammad Taj. فَلَمَّا رَآنِي قَالَ لِي بَعَثَكَ الصَّاحِبْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامْ إِلَيْكَ When he saw me in my dream, he said, Did Imam Mahdi send you to me? قُلْتُ نَعَمْ He said, Yes, فَأَخْرَجَ مِنْ جَيْبِهِ كِتَابًا قَدِيمًا So when I told him that I'm coming from Imam Mahdi, Imam Mahdi sent me to you, he took out a book. It's Muhammad Taj. Who is one of the رجال الغيب of Imam Mahdi. He gave me a book from his pocket. فَإِذَا فَتَحْتُهُ ظَهَرَ لِي أَنَّهُ كِتَابُ الدُّعَى When I opened it, I realized it's a book of supplications. فَقَبَّلْتُهُ I kissed the book. وَوَضَعْتُهُ عَلَى عَيْنِي I put the book on my eyes for the blessing of it. وَانْصَرَفْتُ عَنْهُ مُتَوَجْهًا إِلَى الصَّاحِبَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ I got the book from Muhammad Taj in my vision, my dream. And then I decided I wanted to go back to Imam Mahdi. But as I was going back, فَانْتَبَهْتُ I all of a sudden woke up from that state that I was in. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ مَعِيَ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ The book was not with me. فَشَرَأْتُ فِي التَّذَرُّعَ وَالْبُكَاءَ لِفَوْتِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ تَلَعَ الصُّبْحِ So I started crying and weeping for the loss of that book that Imam Mahdi had given me. فَلَمَّا فَرَغْتُ مِنَ الصَّلَاةُ وَالتَّحْقِيبُ وَكَانَ فِي بَالِي So after he finished his prayer, he thought maybe the person, Muhammad Taj, that Imam Mahdi referred him to in his dream, maybe this person is Shaykh Baha'i. A Shaykh Baha'i, you've heard of him. He was a teacher of Allah Muhammad Taqi, Majesty. Shaykh Baha'i is originally Lebanese. He came with his father from Lebanon. And they settled in Iran. Uh, and Sheikh Muhammad, Sheikh Baha'i, Muhammad ibn Hussein Baha'i, became one of the great scholars of Isfahan. So he said, I, after I woke up from that vision, I thought maybe it's Sheikh Baha'i that Imam Mahdi had told me to go to. وَكَانَ فِي بَالِي أَنَّ مَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدٍ هُوَ الشَّيْخُ الْبَهَائِي وَتَسْمِيَتُهُ بِهِ so he says, I went to say to Shaykh Baha'i, and as I arrived, I saw him with a manuscript of a Sahifa al Sajjadiyah, and he was trying to correct the Sahifa. Muqabala. Muqabala means that. You have two manuscripts of a book and you compare them to make sure that their, the nurse the manuscript is accurate. So he says, and I sat for a period of time with Shaykh Baha'i Sahifa. I think he was going over the Sanad. Of the Asahif and Asajati. Lakin Nalagam and Ladi Kanali Lam Harif Lakin the Lam and Ladi Kanali Lam Harif Kalamahu. Wakun to Abki. But I was, because I was crying, because I was so upset, I couldn't really understand what they were doing. After they were done, the Habtu al Sheikh, I went to Sheikh Baha'i. Wakul to Lahuru Yai, I told him is my, my vision. وَأَنَا أَبِكِي لَفَوَاتِ الْكِتَابِ told him that I'm crying because of the loss of the book that Imam Mahdi had given me. فَقَالَ الشَّيْخْ أَبْشِرْ بِالْعُلُومِ الْإِلَاهِيَّ وَالْمَعَارِفِ الْيَقِينِيَّ Shaykh Baha'i tells him, this is a good news. You should be happy. Imam Mahdi is going to give you a book that has all you need for your spiritual perfection. وَجَمِيعَ مَا كُنْتَ تَطْلُبْ دَائِمًا In all of what you've been seeking for the past years, you will find in this book that Imam Mahdi has given you, because of what Imam Mahdi told you. And then Shaykh 
علامة محمد تقي ماجزي سيز وكان أكثر صحبتي مع الشيخ في التصوف I used to talk with Sheikh Al-Bahai a lot about Arfan, about spirituality not Arfan and Azari not the Arfan of those who claim to uh, to have spirituality the true Arfan of the Ahlul Bayt Tasabufi here means the true Arfan, doesn't mean the Sufiya so Sheikh Bahai tells him Inshallah you, you are going to receive whatever you've been seeking all these years but that didn't soothe me. فلم يسكن قلبي وخرجت باكا متفكرا إلا أن ألقي في روعي أن أذهب إلى الجانب الذي ذهبت إليه في النوم. What Sheikh Bahai told me didn't soothe me. So I went out in that painful state that I was in. I was crying and then all of a sudden it occurred to me to go in that same direction that Imam Mahdi had told me in the dream. So I went in that direction. فَلَمَّا وَصَلْتُ إِلَىٰ دَارِ الْبِتِّيخِ When I went to that place, Dar al-Bittikh is a place in Isfahan. When I went to that place that Imam Mahdi had told me, رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا صَالِحًا كَانَ إِسْمُهُ آقَى حَسَنْ وَيُلَقَّبْ بِتَاجْ I went to that place, I find this guy, his laqab is Taj. فَلَمَّا وَصَلْتُ إِلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ قَالَ يَا فُلَانْ when I got to him, he said, Oh, Muhammad Taqi Majlisi. He mentioned his name. And said, Al Kutub al Waqfiyat will let you in the Kuluman Yahudaha Minat Talaba, La Yaman Bishrut al Waqfu and Heta Amal Biha. Ta'al Bandur Ella Hadi al Kutub, a Kulama Tahtaju Ella Yahudu. I have some books. They are Waqfi. I want you to take one of these. I have given them to other people before. They did not. Respect the conditions of what? I want you to take one of these books. I went with him to where he kept his books. The first book that he gave me, he said, here. That first book was the book that Imam Mahdi had given me in the dream. And it was none other than as sahifa as sajjah The book that Imam Mahdi told Allah Muhammad Taqi Majisi to go and get and in that book you will find all you need for your spiritual perfection. All you need for Irfan as Sahifa as Sajjad. Again I started crying, this time out of happiness. I told him this is enough. This book that you gave me is enough. So afterwards, he goes to Sheikh Baha'i. After he gives, he gives his Sayyid al Sajjadiyya, he goes to Sheikh Baha'i to compare his manuscript that he's gotten from Imam Mahdi, from one of the Rajal al Ghayb of Imam Mahdi. He wants to compare that with the Sahifa al Sajjadiyya, with the manuscript that Sheikh Baha'i has. وَشَرَعَتُ فِي الْمُقَابَلَةِ مَعَ نُسْخَةِ الَّتِي كَتَبَهَا جَدُّ أَبِيهِ مِنْ نُسْخَةِ الشَّهِيدِ in the manuscript that Sheikh Baha'i had, it was from his grandfather. And his grandfather had gotten that manuscript from a Shahid Thani. <laughs> anyway, so they continued and they compared the two manuscripts. And then at the end, Allah Muhammad Taqi says, the manuscript that Imam Mahdi had given me was exactly as the manuscript that Sheikh Baha'i had. So the credibility of a Sahifa as Sajjad. Now this is the important part. After, after this news got to the people, they came to me and they brought their, some of them who had their as Sahifa as Sajjadiyya, they brought them their Sahifa Sajjadi and they, took, they compared the manuscripts with my manuscript. وَبِبَرَكَةِ اِعْتَاعِ الْحُجَّ صَلَوَةُ اللَّهِ صَارَتِ السَّحِيفَةُ الْكَامِ السَّحِيفَةُ الْكَامِ لَا السَّجَّادِيَةِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْبِلَاءِ كَالشَّمْسِ الطَّالِعَةِ فِي كُلَّ بَيْتٍ 
وسيا ما في اصفهان فان اكثر الناس لهم الصحيفه المتعدده because of this encounter that i had because of this vision that i had and because imam mahdi had given me this manuscript and people heard about it they all started to read as sahifa as sajadiya wa sar aktharuhum sulaha wa ahl ad duaa wa kathirun minhum mustajab ad da'wa by reading this as sahifa as sajadiya this transformed the people of Isfahan. And a lot of them became mustajab al da'wah. What does mustajab al da'wah mean? It means whatever you pray for becomes a reality. وَهَذَهِ الْآثَارِ مُعْجِزَةٌ مِنَ الصَّحَبَ عليه السلام. والذي أعطاني أعطان الله تعالى من العلوم بسبب الصحيفة لا أحصيها and the knowledge that I have derived from the الصحيفة السجادية is incredible and I cannot tell you how much knowledge I have derived from the الصحيفة السجادية الذي أعطاني الله تعالى من العلوم بسبب الصحيفة لا أحصيها وذلك من فضل الله علينا وعلى الناس. So brothers and sisters, الصحيفة السجادية. الصحيفة السجادية is the gift from Imam Sajjad. It's the gift from Imam Sajjad. It encompasses all that the Shia need for their spiritual and religious well-being. When you read the Ad'iyya of a Sahifa as Sajjadiyya, you notice that it has everything in it. It has Tawheed. It has Tawalli and Tabarri. It has the Shia point of view about human nature, how human, can improve, how human beings can improve. It has whatever we need for our spiritual perfection. It is a treasure trove that was uttered by Imam Sajjad and then given by Imam Mahdi to Allah Muhammad Taqim al -Jassi. We have this great gem, this great treasure, treasure trove of Shia spirituality, but unfortunately, we do not consult it, we do not read it. Those who want spiritual perfection, rather than going and reading books of Adfan, rather than going and looking for other means, the way that Imam Mahdi has proposed is to go to a Sahifa Sajjadiyya. And we have it with us. It would be kufran, it would be kufr if we do not take advantage of this great gift that Imam Sajjad has left with us. Please recite this salawat. Tonight is the martyrdom. Imam Sajjad, Imam Zain al-Abadeen. Let's give our salam. Let's send our salam to Imam Sajjad, inshaAllah. As-salamu alayk Ya Aba Muhammad Ya Ali ibn al-Husayn يا زين العابدين. Most tragic episode. 
the life of Imam Sajjad. As the tragedy of Karbala. If we want to, if we want to cry for Imam Sajjad, we don't need to cry for his death, because for him death wasn't painful. For him death was a relief. What was painful for him was the tragedy of Karbala. What was painful for him was to witness his brothers, his cousins, his uncles, all being slain by the army of Yazid, by the enemies of God. What was painful for him was to see the bodies of his father and the companions of his father being trampled upon by the horses of the army of Yazid. What was painful for him was to see the head of his father in the majlis of Yazid being hit by Yazid being desecrated by Yazid Imam Hussain didn't stop crying after the tragedy of Karbala It is reported that one day one of the companions of Imam Sajjad went to him and said, Ya Mawlai, you've been crying for the past 20 years. Don't you want to stop crying? He said, how dare you say such a thing? Ya'qub, Nabi Ya'qub, he had 12 sons. One of his sons disappeared. And he knew that Yusuf was alive. But he cried and cried and cried until he became blind. Until his hair turned white. Why, how can I stop crying? When I saw my father, my brothers, my uncles, my cousins, all of them slaughtered, the haram of the Imam Hussain disrespected, how can I stop crying? Allah la'anatullah ala al-qawm al-zalimi. 